Well, welcome to Slamfire Radio, episode 510. Today is June 7th, 2023. I'm one of your hosts, Kyle. I'm another host, Mo. I'm Adriel. And, and I'm still Taylor. That's, Ed, that's Taylor over there. <laughs> so, yeah, down there. <laughs> Kelly's dial-up uh, broke. There's so, uh, her mom yeah. had to use the phone, so uh, she can't be yeah, on the show yeah. right now. Yeah, she's, she's going to be faxing us some stuff <laughs> later. So. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, we'll get right into uh, what we did with guns, and let's start with Mo. Uh, not much for me this week. I went to an Ipsic match in Cornwall, Ontario. Uh, it was it was great. Like they. they the only problem with them is they only put on like two matches a year, but they do an awesome job with it. Uh, uh, Jim, the the MD, and and the rest of their crew. Uh, it was six stages. Turned out to be a nice day. Uh, I shot pretty well. I was pretty happy with it. Um, there's I think one stage that I, I wish to have back, but the rest of it was good. Um, like I said, yeah, they they they're always creative and and fun, and and it's like the best of Ipsic, I think. Um, what uh, if uh, what's good like top third, top top half? Uh, well, for th- I think they're top one or two. Like I think for me, anyways. Oh, not- like you, you said, you shot it well, right? Oh, I know, always middle of the pack. <laughs> middle of the pack. <laughs> I'm Mister Middle. I'm not like Taylor. I'm Mister Middle. So, <laughs> um, but I was happy. There's one stage I finished. I think I finished fifth at in production so i was happy about that but um there was uh i didn't have a lot of mics so i was thrilled and uh there was one stage where i str- i struggle when i'm leading right-handed shooter and when i'm leading to my left so mm. that's something i gotta, like obviously i uh, gotta work on like leading to my right no problem leading to my left that's when i, I start to have a few mis- more misses right i'm not as mm. i'm not as comfortable mm. like leaning around a, a wall or a bear a uh, barricade whatever so yeah you gotta get that weight over your over your right knee or your left knee i have too much weight over both knees so that's (laughs) that's i'm not i'm not not super flexible but anyways um and uh, yeah that was it and then i have uh i have another ipsic match in stittsville ontario this weekend so i did my att online uh, which I really like doing. It's it's super easy versus the old paper system. But anyways, Mo, you said you said you don't didn't do lots of guns, but you've like you shot a match. You do another match next weekend. You do matches like every weekend. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and next, yeah, this this coming weekend, I'm uh, Ipsic match on the Saturday, and then I'm going to a Rimfire match in Vermont. So yeah, but I don't yeah. do much. I don't, <laughs> I don't do much. Yeah. <laughs> Not, don't do much. Just. At minimum one, if not two matches a two weekend. Per, yeah, <laughs> two per weekend. Yeah. Hey, so you said that you did your ATT online. Uh, yeah. Do many people out that in that that neck of the woods do long term ATTs? Like, do they call up the the CFO and say, "Hey, I shoot a lot of Ipsic. Can I get an ATT for Ontario, Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia?" Like, uh, I don't think they issue them for that. But like, I I have one. I'm a me- I'm I live in Quebec, and I have um I'm a member of uh, an Ontario range, and mm. I did get a long term. Like, I have a year's worth for that one, so until my mm. membership expires. But I don't think you can, uh, unless well, you're already registered oh, for yeah. everything. I don't think you could just. Um, I have been. Heard- Oh yeah, there's there's people out here in Alberta that say no. I I called the CFO. They said, do you shoot a lot of Epsic? Yes. Well, where do you shoot your matches? BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. They said, well, we could give you a long term ATT for five years for any Epsic match in Western Canada. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I was actually on the phone today, and I was I meant to ask that, and I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Service with yeah. a smile. Yeah. Uh, I I always meant to do that, but I had been told that people get in Canada wide ATTs because of their IPSC membership. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not uh, not that I'm aware of for Quebec and Ontario. So, mm. but mm. if anybody else knows different, please chime in. <laughs> <laughs> First, call uh, the CFO and ask. No, I call the CFO and ask. Um, give him a give him a good story. Yeah, give him a good story. Yeah. I'm high level shoot you one know, or high- two matches a weekend yeah. <laughs> i don't do much though um <laughs> i think that's it for me uh how about you adriel 
Uh, let's see. So uh, Thursday night, I did the the steel challenge. I brought my Jericho, and uh, I think it was a mistake. Uh, the gun ran fine. The, I think the trigger pull on it's 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 fine. Nothing to worry about there. The mag release is fine. I just didn't like the sights. So I've got that white front sight, blacked out rear. Um, but we are shooting from underneath a shelter, and we we're yeah. shooting into like a fairly a, a bright bay. I had a lot of uh, problems picking up that white dot, like just a quick snap, pull it up, and get that mm. white dot in there and, and get it on on target. So um, I think I would have rather had my fiber optic shadow too. But now yeah. I know. Now I know. I just wanted to like try it out, and uh, but it was good. Still a fun time. Still like, oh, I love steel challenge. You can get so many rounds down range in such a mm-hmm. short period of time. Oh, yeah. Oh, just fire your five or six or whatever go through your five mags there's 25 rounds you're off you're on to the next thing and the next guy's up and they're firing like oh yeah nice and quick very good for uh draws as well uh we weren't doing draws we we're just going low ready because it's a generally like uh this is a fun shoot it wasn't a competitive mm-hmm. black badge required or anything like that so um i was i had my holster and i just used it to transport my gun basically uh but uh but really good um really interesting <laughs> my gas bill is uh, is is like super high this month. I've been mean, going to these. I've been hitting the range like twice a week, and my ranges are far. They're they're like an hour to the range, an hour back. I've been doing like two hour Oof. round trips twice a week, and <laughs> my my gas bill is high this 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 month. Uh, but it's still it's still a great time. And then so that was the Thursday. On the oh, what was it? Saturday or Sunday? Saturday, I guess we did uh, National Range Day at Sherwood Park. I ran the pistol bay for that, so I brought out a pile of guns, and we had a bunch of people out there, and they had a good time. Some Slam Fire listeners came out and uh, got to meet some of them, and uh, yeah, it's a really good time. Uh, and uh, yeah, pretty straightforward. Uh, uh, I had a little bit of spare time in between some shooters, so I picked a crap load of brass because I was on the pistol bay. So I was like, it's constantly uh, picking, uh, picking. <laughs> Oh, is there anyone coming? No, no. Okay, I'll pick pick some more, <laughs> sort it, and uh, and then I got home. Like, oh, I got and tumbled it, and I got like two thousand rounds or two thousand cases of of nine nice. uh, I already have. I've already reloaded a thousand of it. So <laughs> now I'm down to half. So I need to buy some more bullets. I think, uh, or I don't know. I'm sitting on a lot of nine mil. Maybe I can just like take take my foot off the gas for a minute. Um. <laughs> And then, so I, I didn't show this last week, but uh, this is the WK181. Uh, this is the AK mag version. So they sell a 7.62 version that's the straight uh, AR style. That one, you can get 10 round mags. This one, you can't. You can just get the Rock and Lock AK mags. There is no AK pistol in Canada, so five rounds only uh, on there. But uh, But that magazine is pretty secure in there. Um, a couple of things. So I haven't shot a WK 180, uh, 180 Gen 2 yet. Um, I My previous one, I had like a very early 180 uh, Gen 1. Uh, I have my WSMCR, which I have um, modified <laughs> to hell. Um, so I haven't, haven't had like one of their factory guns in, in my hands for a while. There's a couple of things that are kind of interesting about it. One, the side charger on it is just way better than the bolts that would break and... Uh, and, and just they weren't that great the the first gen ones this one feels nice and solid it's non-reciprocating and it's nice and chunky i like it uh it's got a bolt hold open so if you want to you can just push that and then pull that bolt hold open down and lock the bolt it's an ak mag so there is no like last shot bolt hold open on it you're not going to get that with with something like this mm-hmm. um the paddle release is uh is nice and big so you're you're not going to be able to miss that uh the forend is nice and smooth it's like it's got I, i'm sure this is not m-lock compliant because th- i'm pretty sure to be like m-lock compliant it's got to be like sharp and square and these are like <laughs> really soft they're really they're radius all of them all of them are radius on the inside so you put your hand on this thing it feels kind of nice it's kind of soft on there Whereas every other M-Lock rail I have is like mm, not cheese grater, but like, but not nearly as like smooth as this one. Like I can move my hand on this one, and I'm not catching on any 
any rails or anything like that. Still has a chunky butt on it. Still has like this chunky uh, buffer tube adapter on here. Um, and this is the one that's been fired a few thousand rounds through by the guys on Discord, the Canadian Firearms Enthusiasts something T. There's a T in there. Testers or something. Is that the 10,000 round guys? Yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. I've got to put. I have to put seven. I, I was supposed to put seven hundred rounds through this thing two weekends ago, but I brought it out, fired it once, and uh, had a case uh, lock inside of it because it needed to be cleaned, and uh, and it wasn't. So maybe I'll shoot this a little bit this weekend. Probably not a lot. Um, next weekend I've got a double header uh, maple seed at uh, Short Park. I'll probably have a little bit more time then. Maybe I can get the seven hundred rounds through this thing that, uh, that I've been wanting to, but I don't know. Kind of some interesting things about it. Uh, yeah, Battle of Alberta. It's going to be this weekend. That's the big... Uh, it's a two-day match, but it's three days. Because I'm, I'm actually heading out tomorrow night. To, so Thursday night, I'm going to head out to the range, uh, do a little bit of lawn mowing, uh, set up a camper. Because Friday early on, uh, we're going to start the stage setups. Hmm. And if we finish early, we're going to have a volunteer and RO uh, shootout. Nice. Nice. Not, not force on force, uh, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we're going to head to head. Head to head. Yeah. To, to the death. Yeah. <laughs> to the <It's> death. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't like, I don't like my odds too much for that. Um, yeah. So, so that's on the Friday. The match proper is Saturday, Sunday. Um, and I'm going to be camping out at the range. So the range has like allowed us to, to camp out there for the match. And I, I like that. Uh, Jennifer says still time to use it as a BOA stage gun. Jennifer, if you can make that happen, I have the ammo and we could put it on there. I just, oh. I don't, I don't like stage guns. Cause what if it fails? I was, say, I was about to say you're one round through it got stuck. <laughs> well, that's because it needed clean. Because, or equity. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's a, there's some equity issues there. I, I don't know about that, but. I don't know how much I care either about competitor equity because like <laughs> how much longer is three gun going to uh, be a thing? How, how much longer are these like sports going to be a thing if, if they all get canceled within the year kind of a thing. Right. So I don't know. Well, I, I just, got wanna, that's well, that's, that's my, my approach. To this is like, I want, I want to shoot as much as possible while I can. So I've been going to like the Thursday, I've been taking my kids, I've been taking like the younger one because he hasn't had a chance to shoot as much as the older ones, so I'm like getting him in there to uh, to shoot, and I want him to like experience it while he still can. So, mm -hmm. um, Battle of Alberta this year is going to be hot. Last year, last year it was like 34, and I remember like setting up stages <laughs> in the 34, and it's so sunny, and it's going to be the same fucking thing this weekend. <laughs> it's going to be like th today it was 28. It's going to get hotter tomorrow and the day after. It's going to be like 30. And dusty, and mm, mm. that sounds like beautiful weather. Uh, <laughs> Thirty degrees, for New Mexico. That for sounds New like <laughs> regular New Mexico. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But uh, <laughs> eh, that's gonna be fun. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah, camping out at the range, hanging out with, uh, with gun people is, uh, is always a fun time. So mm -hmm. that's the part I, I always looked forward to. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Very much looking forward to that. So. Well, that's yep. uh, that's gonna be my weekend. How about you, Kyle? Uh, well, didn't make it to Roswell because couldn't find their steel challenge on practice course, so I wasn't gonna drive to Roswell to take a chance on whether they had their match or not. But I did get some parts in. Da da da. -da. So I built my AR. Uh, oh, what <laughs> did you just take out of it? Uh, that was my Something D60. Wrong with your magazine. Oh. My D60 that is non neutered. Non <laughs> uh, got a hole in it. Does it work? Uh, yeah, it's, it, it, it's got a hole in it because it is. it was neutered, but it's not neutered anymore. That's a drain hole now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or a dust hole. Yeah, knock the dust out because those actually seal really well. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, basically, what it turned out to be with all the spare parts and well, spare parts, all the parts I had around here is it's a Aero Precision slash JP Enterprises AR. <laughs> so I bought the 
the matching M4E1 upper. Got the Atlas S1 handguard, 15 inch handguard. Um, my first thing is the anodizing, you can tell they were not done at the same time because I have three different colors of Kodiak Brown between the three different metal pieces that were anodized. <laughs> that sounds like my three gun rifle from 2019. Like the, the upper, the lower, and the handguard are all different shades of Kodiak Brown and they're very <laughs> noticeable. So I was a little disappointed in that. But, uh, yeah, got it all set up, uh, without optics or the irons. It was, what was it? Uh, 16 or not 16, six pounds, 15 ounces. Mm -hmm. And then once I got the optics, well, the optic and the four to five irons, it was eight pounds, 11 ounces. So uh, not so bad. Yeah. So good. Yeah. I had my bolt, but I had a JP, uh, actual bolt kit. So I changed out the actual bolt head, the silent capture buffer tube, mm. and JP match match grade barrel. I hope that uh, this gas block doesn't cause an issue because it is tight in this handguard. I don't know if we'll be able to see. I can pull the barrel just up a little bit, but down it's it's like so tight that there's not much movement on mm. the bottom of the gas block between that and the handguard. So when I take it out this weekend to actually tune said gas block, uh, we'll find out if it affects the accuracy. And if it does, then I'll have to get a new gas block. But, but yeah, so. What, what muzzle brake are you running? Uh, that is actually the JP muzzle brake on here. That's not um, the recoil eliminator, is it? That big spoon-looking thing? Uh, I don't know what they call it. It's the one actually they they actually sell it with their match barrel, but mm. this one was not a match set. I had the break beforehand, and then I bought the barrel, so it wasn't matched. Is when you get them matched, you can't even tell that there's a seam. Like there's no thrust washer. They just they're threaded on, and they they're there. Wow. Yeah, but. Uh, uh, I did have ours. I got to do a bunch of cleaning up to the one that my, me and dad were developing. And because it's not tunable because there's just so much crud in the threads for the set screws to actually tune that brake to this gun. So so it hasn't been run for a while. But uh, yeah, looking forward to actually getting this out to the range and shooting it. Oh, yeah. And then like before, I have the Timney 49er safety. So it's. I think it's like, yeah, I think it's 49 degrees is actually what it throws to. And then the Timney DH3 trigger. So mm, Very nice. So yeah. Uh, get that out this weekend and tuned up and get going on the rifle for multi-gun nationals. Are you going? I'm re I'm going. I'm registered. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that is July. Yeah, July 21st going. I'm currently, I'm going to see if I get bumped out of the squad because I squatted with uh, Daniel Horner and then I guess later Lena Michalik actually squatted on the same squad. It's supposedly the uh, modified super squad, but I figured by now if there was space open on it, I'd squad there and see if I get booted. <laughs> hey, you know, usually the super squad they have reserved, so if you get in it, you're in it. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. We'll, yeah, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, that's that's really it for guns. I I got to get out and do my training, get back into the dry fire. Now that I have three guns to to shoot, that'll be a little easier. Uh, club match next weekend. But uh, yeah, other than that, I posted on Facebook. I figure I'll mention it here just to keep myself accountable and that. But uh, to, as of this morning, nine thirty this morning, I was nine days smoke free from. Nice. nice. Two packs, a, at least two packs a day to to that. So <laughs> good, good for you. Proud of so you. much money. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I'm Up in Canada, I was, I was spending a lot, a little bit less down here, but yeah, <laughs> still too much. Up in smoke. Yeah. Up in smoke. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, there's still the time where just that, just the habit of it, I wouldn't mind uh, 
go in and have one but uh so far been able to just sit there and say no i, I don't smoke i don't need it i've lasted nine days so <laughs> good streak it's a good streak you're over the one week hump just keep pushing yeah. it yeah so yeah but that is it for me uh well i guess taylor what did you do in guns this week taylor <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, I, I guess we i guess we went in depth on it but i can do a spark notes is um i went to the first canadian pcc nationals uh put on by ipsit canada uh, i ended up winning that and that was a great time it was a little a little rainy a little cold but there was no smoke not like what new york is experiencing right now mm. but um yeah that was, uh, it was a lot of fun i just got back a couple days ago and uh now i get to put the pcc in the safe for a while and break out the handguns mm. nice <laughs> cool so yeah and I'm one year smoke free, I guess. There you go. Nice. <laughs> I am fifteen. Fifteen years smoke free. Fifteen? Nice. Nice. When I came when I came back to Canada, I was like, oh, it's gonna be too expensive. So I like I left a, <laughs> I left a cigarette and a lighter on my living room table. And if I was out, I'd be like, no, I got that cigarette at home. I don't need to buy anything. And I get home, I'd be like, fuck you, I'm not gonna smoke you. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I All had right. tried that before, just having it in a console. I think I made it a month, and then I was like, "Oh, I wonder how it tastes." Oh, it tastes terrible. Let me have another one to confirm. <laughs> it. <laughs> so I, yeah, no, I just I woke up last Monday morning. I wasn't even planning on it. I just it was at the house and woke up in the morning, ran out of smokes, having my coffee out on the porch. And I decided, you know what? Let's let's give it a go. Good time to do it. Yeah, <laughs> laziness <time>. wins. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, let's get up to upcoming events, and uh, you know, maple seeds. I'm sure there's still more being added all the time, or are we pretty oh, yeah. much maxed out for the year now? No, Ontario no? just added a whole tranche of events, nice. which I put out on email. I don't know if they're on the website yet, but yeah, Ontario just added a whole pile of them. And BC is doing. A northern trip they're gonna go up through like 100 mile house and way up there and they're gonna do grand prairie too on their way through oh nice mm-hmm. good good okay uh fine if you're looking for a three gun match you can head over to uh three gun.ca and adriel's been populating that with the three gun matches that he's been hearing about mm-hmm. and i mean there's there's clubs all around it doesn't have to be like three gun but i know btsa all over has their own websites that uh, promote their their epsic or even their outlaw matches and whatnot so. mm. uh we'll get on to the news uh cahill verdict Who put this one in i did um oh. yeah so peter cahill this is actually his third trial um his first trial ended he was found innocent the crown was like hey they, we don't think this was done right. There's no such thing as double jeopardy in Canada, by the way. We don't think this is done right. We appeal. Uh, the judge should have like said, like, this is the guy that um, heard something happening outside, took his shotgun mm-hmm. out there, uh, found someone in his truck. The guy in the truck did something to it. He thought he had a, he had a handgun on, and he shot him twice. Um, he was acquitted in that first trial. Um the crown appealed and they said, hey, uh, the ju- we feel like the judge should have instructed the jury to also pay attention to how they brought the- he brought the shotgun out there and he like started this whole thing. Um, so then they had another trial and that one there was a mistrial. So this is the third trial and they found him guilty and they sentenced him to take eight years. Mm. It's, it's insane. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I kind of agree because like yeah. they this is his third trial. Um, you could say like the other two weren't done correctly, but uh, um, I don't know. In, yeah. in the end, like yeah, it's a self defense. Um, the argument was like he like escalated things by bringing the shotgun out there, which sure I guess, but at the same time, you know, don't steal from, middle of the don't, night. Don't, you hear something yeah. outside? Yeah, you bring yeah. something. Am I gonna go yeah. out there with nothing? <laughs> well, or uh, that that. The Canadian justice system is uh, is is fucking crazy right now, and, yeah, uh, is. and this yeah. is this is one of the things where it's like, oh, you brought the shotgun out. It's your fault now that uh, this this criminal yeah. died. Yeah, uh, cr- yeah, career criminals with tons of prohibition uh, mm-hmm. against them just keep getting let off. 
but time after time yeah. after time after time. Yeah. Yep. We'll see if you show total disregard for the law. Well, you're a lost cause, so they might as well yeah. just let you go. But if you show that you actually care a little bit, well, then we're going to oh, put you in jail so that you, you're going to learn this time. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, if, you, they, if you encourage people to steal from you, then uh, that's your fault. So, oh, yeah, you, you, had, uh, you had something on the dash of your truck. That was yeah. very enticing. Yeah. 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 Yeah, eight, eight years for uh, manslaughter does seem uh, pretty steep. Pretty steep. That's that's pretty mm-hmm. steep compared to. Geez, and here in Edmonton, we had some guy uh, push a, an old lady onto the train tracks, try to kill her, and uh, he's out already. <laughs> that happened like two <laughs> <Yeah>. years ago. <laughs> and uh, yeah, this guy, you know, uh, ends up in a self defense situation where it's like a you know a, a judgment call and. Uh, jail for eight years after uh, this happened in 2016 like this is nine years ago eight years ago a long time ago anyways yeah bankrupt by now because of like yeah. having to pay lawyers for three trials yep. three yeah. like wow. punished punished by the process and punished by the system that's yeah. unreal it's crazy yeah they want us to know that self-defense is not a thing you know mm-hmm. just yeah. lay, like, lay down and take a gray it, area like, yeah. Right. Yeah. They want it to be. It is. Yeah. Like they want it to be so vague that you don't even want to try it. That you should be scared to even defend yourself. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, they don't want you to defend yourself. They, yeah. they don't. Call the cops. They'll be there in fifteen minutes, unless you're rural. Yeah. Then, like an hour, they'll be there yeah. in an hour. hour, hour and if, if they if bother they to come at all, if they yeah. come, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, our machine shop got robbed, and uh, they, didn't, they didn't show up. <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah. no, no, it's not worth it. They're long gone. Okay. Yeah. But is it we'll okay come in the morning defend? and take an inventory. <laughs> okay, can, can we put an armed person there? That We've been knocked over a couple of times. Can I put an armed person there? You're not going to do your job. Can I Can yeah. I do it for you? <laughs> no. Yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. Well, yeah. upside yeah. down world. Yeah. yeah. But let's get on to uh, new gun stuff. New gun stuff is brought to you by Bullseye North. You need a new boomstick? Bullseye North is Canada's shooting superstore and a proud supporter of the CCFR. They have a wide selection of guns and a bunch of gear for any shooter. Free shipping, over $200. Some exclusions apply like ammo, stuff like that. And you can subscribe to their weekly newsletter to get their get access to the hottest deals. Yeah, and right now the deal that we have is oh, I found on CGN that I liked is they have fifty up to fifty five percent off uh, EGW rails and mounts. So EGW makes good, decent rails, uh, decent yeah. pricing on them, and they're decent quality. And uh, yeah, they got a whole bunch of them. So actually, I wonder how many they have. What they, do they have anything interesting here? CVA Cascade Long Action. I don't know what that is. Novak. Oh, I got oh, a okay. Novak. Hmm. Hmm. Little Vortex Viper red dot mount there. Savage 93. 33 bucks. Hell yeah. Yeah, you won't have to worry about that white dot if you just put a red dot on there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't I think it's Novak though. I don't know what the what the Israelis use for their for their cuts on their IWI. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. These prices look great, though. So go check that out um, because, uh, yeah, those look really decent. Yes. I Run Guns has uh, uh, a couple of the restricted Bren 2 MSs on sale. They have the 11-inch barrel one and the 8-inch barrel one. They've sold out of the 16s. Um, mm. An 8-inch 5.56 barrel is going to be pretty. Even an 11-inch is going to be pretty boomy. Holy crap. That's a handy yeah. little package. Yeah? Yeah? handy uh yeah. i suppose you could re- if you got a barrel you could rebarrel it i guess that's uh yeah. i heard that's... red deer is doing those yeah red deer um SNG hardware was doing those from our star like they're doing like a whole bunch of people are doing those right now they're rebarreling yeah. um you still end up with the like tiny little fore end and the like a long yeah. dong barrel coming out the end of it but there are some aftermarket uh, forens you can get to kind of balance yeah. the whole package out if you're if you're looking for that kind of a thing. I've heard nothing but good things about the CZs. Yeah, nothing. same here. Yeah, it's the CZ. Bren twos. Yeah, CZ Bren two. 
Um, Prophet River just got a bunch of Night Force scopes in, so if you're looking for one of those, check them out. Um, I, you know, you don't see this too much, and, and Tilsenberg just said that, hey, we, they've got a whole bunch of left-handed uh, rifles and shotguns and that kind of thing. So there you go, Taylor. <laughs> I, thought, I thought I'd put it up for all those cursed people out there who love uh, for the lefties. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> you know, funny that's the only kind of gun that I actually shoot right-handed is a bolt gun. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Whenever I shoot that. The ORPS or CRPS, I just I'd say I've got a right handed 22, I'm sticking with it. <laughs> <laughs> but they've got this is this one was kind of interesting. They've got, they've got the Connect FD12 bullpup in left hand. So if you wanted to go gamer open for a three gun, mm. you could. Oh, I thought about that for a long time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there was one other interesting one here. Did I write it down? Oh, the, yeah, they had the 1022 left hand. Uh, hmm. I don't see it right now. Maybe they sold out. The competition, the tent, the uh, I yeah, think yeah, yeah, it was there. It's the gray one, was it? Uh, they all look gray. Oh, yeah, there it is. Second, yep. yeah, yeah. I wonder if it has that left handed magazine on it. Hmm, anyways, that was kind of interesting. Very, uh, the MP FPC, that weird side folder, uh, starting mm. to become more available, starting to see them everywhere. Tenda Tilsenberg had them. Uh, the winner for price right now. G4C. They've got them. Oh, they jacked their prices up. Oh, I, I saw oh. it yesterday. I saw it this morning, actually. This morning, it what was, was it? 919 Yeah. Oh. Now it's mm. nine ninety nine. Hmm. Hey, and if you want to shoot Ipswich PCC, you can keep that mag in the stock while you shoot. Oh. Yeah, is there it, you go. Uh, is it faster than going to your belt? Ah, oh, who knows? But if you want to just like, <laughs> replicate what you're doing in the bush, you know mm -hmm, what? Mm -hmm. You don't have a belt, just stick it in your gun. They've got a case yeah. that they that they bring with this thing too, and it like hey, you're all set. Gun. Yeah, you're all yeah. set for Ipsic PCC right there. Huh. Thousand bucks. Looks ugly as hell. Oh yeah, <laughs> ugliest sin. Yeah. Oh, oh, just, just yeah. Only a parent would love. If, uh, it, if it's ugly and it works, I love it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I miss this one. I I did everyone a disservice. Profit River ran. Profit River runs this Vortex open box sale. Uh, I think they run it once a year. I missed it. Sorry, guys. They had like a bunch of stuff for like way cheaper than retail. Uh, too bad. So sad. They're all that's left are like scope caps and like throw rings and that kind of thing. So if you're looking for one of those, they had a red dot uh, ring, which is uh, just a one ring out of a set of two. <laughs> Thirty millimeter. <laughs> Yeah, so, like they sell a 30 millimeter ring that's just one so you can use it with I actually I have one on my uh Oh, like a cantilever? No, just a straight ring. I have one I have straight one on ring. my uh WSMCR because it, it fits on the Aimpoint uh, Pro. It's a 30 millimeter Oh tube. yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. Yeah, so it's just it's just a very high ring, but just a set of one and it's cheaper. Anywho, they had one of those. Uh all their good stuff is sold out though. Uh, CSC Calgary, uh, Canada's gun shop out in Calgary, they have the Magpul DACA grid organizer. So you need to supply your own case in this case, the vault, uh, Pelican vault, uh, V 800. And then they're like a series of cubes you put in there to like fit your gun and reconfigure it. Mm -hmm. I kind of like it. And I guess the cubes stick at the bo the bottom mm -hmm. then, right? Yeah. Well, it's it's and it's there. reconfigurable so yeah. that if you change your gun, you yeah, it's not like okay. the plug foam. for people like me who can't make up their mind and just don't want to order a nice foam laser cut <laughs> and then change your mind the next week. Well, exactly. I see, I see so many people with those pick and pulls, and they pick and pull it for like <laughs> oh one, they have they have like a huge case. They pick and pull it for one gun. Like, oh man! You don't think gotta... you're ever gonna buy another gun? What if you want to bring your rifle and your pistol to the range? Well, I guess I guess you gotta take it in some other case because <laughs> oh, you pick man. and pulled this one case for like just the rifle and a couple of magazines in there. Like you're gonna put your yeah. magazines in your rifle case? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have strong opinions oh. about pick and pull foam. And I got a great case, uh, like a 42 inch big rifle case, and I ended up picking it for my airsoft rifles when I was 18. And I still have that case, and I use it for like whenever I fly places. <laughs> I got no foam left, so it's, everything's rattling around. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and then this was kind of kind of interesting. Frontier Firearms they had a bunch of uh, older. These are all used rifles. This is kind of the stuff that um, 
oh, TEC Tradex would sell. I wonder if they, I think they did get their inventory because the, like, it's exactly the kind of stuff that would, they would sell. Like they've got like M96s. Uh, these are like Ooh. Swedish Mauser rifles. Mm. They got them in like 30 odd six. They've got them in uh, 65 by 55, 65 Swiss, 8 by 57, that kind of thing. Right around 350. So if you like, this is way less than a, wow. a Savage Axis or something like that. If you hunt close range, like most people do across the country, um, wouldn't that be classy? Just grabbing like one of these guys here, little Swedish Swedish uh, rifle in six five by fifty five. Just run irons. Yeah. I can't yeah. because I, I I hunt like prairies, and sometimes I got to make those three hundred yard shots, and it's not going to cut the mustard. <laughs> but uh, yeah, mm-hmm. for any of you guys who are like sh- hunting bush most of the time, man, that would be classy and cheap yeah. too. Way cheaper than Savage Axis. What are those going for right now? Six hundred bucks? Five hundred bucks? Too much. <laughs> Too much. Anyways, huh? yeah, that's uh, that's Frontier Firearms that had that man. That's I think that's all the that I wanted to show. Yeah. Well, we'll get into the main topic. Okay. And tonight we have. Well, he's been on the show before, but uh, Taylor Reich just come back from the PCC Nationals. And, uh, well, Taylor, why don't you introduce yourself and welcome back for one. Oh, I think we should have given him like a, a WWF welcome. <laughs> oh, okay. Welcome back yeah. to the show, reigning PCC Nationals out. champion, <laughs> Taylor Wright. Two-time national Wright. champion. Wright. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, guys. It's it's awesome to be back on the show. Uh, yeah, I'm Taylor. Um, I'm an Ipsit competitor, former three-gunner. I guess I could probably say still three-gunner. <laughs> Last three-gunner. <laughs> Um, yeah, just got back from the first Ipsa Canada PCC Nationals that was held out in Nova Scotia. Same range that Pistol Nationals was held at last year. They kind of uh, they did a bit of a recycled job on that match and did a really good job on that one. So nice. yeah, I'm glad to be back in a place that's warm and not raining. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it? Did it rain out there most of the match then, or? uh half the time yeah saturday it was it was pretty miserable rainy 12 14 degrees cold Mm. yeah guns were soaking wet and then it was it was supposed to be the same if not worse on sunday and we kind of lucked out on that it was just overcast but i I was really happy about that because i hate shooting in the rain (laughs) yeah i don't know many people who like competing in the rain (laughs) no no rain cold anything that makes my trigger finger slow down i don't like it yeah well, so you uh, will get right out of the way. You ended up winning the match. Mm-hmm. So congratulations. Thank Overall, uh, how was the match? It was, it was, uh, you can think of a, a regular pistol Ipsic match, but then push the targets out at least twice as far for the most part. Okay. There was some that, that they just made it a little bit more interesting close up and you had to rely on your ability to maneuver around walls and whatnot. But yeah, it was a pistol match twice the distance, if not more. Uh, And a lot of the stages, well, maybe not a lot. There was a a lot of recycled stages from, from nationals, but they would push them out a bit further. The famous cart stage that had an activator with a big cart rolling down. They pushed that out another 10 yards and they used mini targets. So, I mean, for the most part, PCC shooters in this country either shoot three gun or they shoot Ipsic pistol matches and you're used to shooting in close and, and quickly. Right. And this was, this was different in that you prioritized accuracy quite a bit more. You would have a lot of 20 and even out to 50 yard paper targets, you'd have poppers at 80 yards. So you had to, you had to kind of know your zero and know your holds uh, to, to some degree. Um, I kind of checked my my rifle right before or carbine. It's an eighteen. It's a nineteen inch barrel. It's a rifle. It's not yeah. a carbine. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing carbine about a barrel that long. Um, yeah, you had to know, kind of know your hits uh, and and be patient and be more accurate than what you're used to. But the match was very well run. There was only about sixty of us shooters, so it was kind of the way that we do matches here in Alberta. You have a, a shoot and work schedule, so we shot in the in the cold rainy morning. And then put our guns away and got told go back to your, go back to your stage. You're going to be running the brick in the afternoon, uh, which I kind of expected. But oh, that was miserable. That was a uh, there was a lot of guys just dedicated to PCC that made that match work. 
<laughs> nice. Well, 60 people, that's still not bad for, for the first one. And I mean, mm -hmm. I think in Alberta, it's only been Southern Alberta even trying to do any matches. Has there been really much for like level two matches? Around? Uh, there's been nothing that's strictly PCC. And yeah, at least here in Alberta, trying to get PCC offered at a match, it's completely up to the match director. It's not up to Ipsic Alberta. So if a match director doesn't want the extra hassle, quote unquote, of having extra tablets, scoring the match differently than the pistol match, uh, then they will just say, nope, no PCC offered at this match. Uh, Brooks, Lethbridge have offered PCC, so that's good. Uh, the match I'm going to next weekend, uh, was that the 18th, 17th, 18th, at, at my home club, BTSA, they're not offering it. Um, PCC is going in the safe for me anyway but it would be nice to, to have it offered more. Uh, I do believe that one of our zone directors is putting forth a motion to mandate offering PCC at all matches as an option. Mm -hmm. So that would be, that would be really good for the growth of the sport, considering that's, that's really all we have left for um, getting into IPSC. Okay. okay. So, well, that just leads into a perfect question with no real PCC matches going on. How did you, how did you guys and the rest of like, team alberta prepare for this match like just a lot of training or like for match training yeah you, you just had to be kind of interested in the pcc and and shoot like we we shoot club matches every week at btsa and we always offer pcc for that but that's 20 guys on a thursday night so that that was a lot of good training value for me and i'm also the director for uspsa at at btsa so i put on two matches one at the end of April, one um, near the end of May, and I offered PCC at those. So our our guys got some some practice shooting matches and that, and then the Lethbridge and Brooks matches. But uh, I actually wasn't even on the on the Team Alberta Gold team because I hadn't shot a, a PCC match yet. I didn't shoot any last year, and there was one offered at the end of the year in Brooks. So it was it was pretty much train on your own time and and you know shoot the club matches that you can. But as for sanctioned matches, there's been six opportunities to shoot a PCC in the last year. Hmm. So we're, we're hoping to change that. But it was a lot like our experience going to shotgun nationals, right? That was, we had never shot a shotgun only match before, uh, before yeah. nationals. That was kind of a first, first of its kind. Yeah. But at least we had three gun matches to fall back on that. Our experience with three gun matches to, to use for that. Yeah. Well, that's why we went, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're the, we're, we shoot shotgun and three gun. I don't think the Ipsic guys shoot shotgun very much. We could probably take this. <laughs> that sounded like it works for the PCC too. So, are you saying Team Alberta won without you? Uh, no, they they still calculated in Team Alberta, but I wasn't part of the gold team. So, the way uh, that Ipsic Alberta calculates the the top tour, the top four finishers in the provincial standings get a gold team slot. I don't know if it actually did anything for this match. I don't know if they got funding, if they comp their match fee or did anything like that. But they gave us jerseys that we picked up at the match and. Uh, the other guys said gold team. <laughs> Mine didn't because of, I hadn't shot a match, right? No. It would be kind of silly for them to give me an arbitrary spot on the team, having not shot anything. <laughs> just yeah, that's some fair. schmuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, just some joke. Some guy. Yeah. <laughs> so was there just four from Alberta, or were there more guys from Alberta? No, there was. There was uh, So myself, Everett Polito, former three-gunner, Justin Thompson, mm -hmm. former three-gunner, and then we had uh, Cody Fontaine from down. Uh, I think he's in Lethbridge. Um, he wasn't on the team, but he just he wanted to go shoot it, and he had a great time. We he squatted with us, and that was a lot of fun. We also had another two shooters that were on the gold team who didn't end up going. I think um, scheduling conflicts or work or something like that. Um, but they, yeah, they didn't go. So it was there was five of us who went from Alberta, and then there was a couple from BC, one from Saskatchewan, I think one or two from. Manitoba. It was predominantly Ontario and, and Nova Scotia that that kind of bumped the numbers up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. The locals, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. kind of like shotgun nationals, right? It was mostly Ontario that that got the yeah. numbers up there. Well, yeah, because it's a little closer, and yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 for sure. Uh, what about the actual PCCs themselves? Like, uh, what were you, what were you shooting? What was the champion shooting? Uh, well, what? Well, I'll start by saying that the match, uh, not for the most part, but a big chunk of the match was, can you keep your gun running? I was <laughs> shocked at how many, th there was 
out of 60 shooters, I'd say maybe five, five to 10 did not have malfunctions. It was shocking. I, I heard that too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I heard and that from so, uh, Tim, I think. Tim Gillis. Oh, Tim Gillis. Yeah. 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 So what I shot, I shot the Raven. I've been, I got this in January and I've been running it. I've been figuring out the kinks and, and the teething issues and, and getting it to run properly. And I love it. Honestly, it's, it's a fantastic PCC. Uh, you saw a lot of Ruger PC carbines, a lot of FX nines. I saw one sub 2000. I saw one JR carbine. Those two had no issues. <laughs> None. Yeah. Weird. Well, well, there had to have been a bunch of high points there, right? I didn't see a high point. I was looking forward to seeing a high point. Didn't see <laughs> when we were working our stage, Wes and I were just waiting. We're like, where's the high point? We're like, where's the sub 2000? They find the sub 2000 finally showed up and we were cheering. Uh, but yeah, mostly FX nines and, and PC carbines. Um, yeah. And then there was three Ravens. There was myself, Justin Thompson, and then one of the Ontario guys, Anatoly, uh, Oh, Anatoly, yeah. 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 We shot yeah. with him in Shotgun Nationals. What a character. I love that guy. Oh, that guy's awesome. <laughs> so he had a Raven as well. I don't know if he had any issues, but uh, Justin and I had some issues. Mine were mostly magazine falling out related. Well, I only had two, and they were on one stage. The mag fell out prematurely, and I couldn't get another mag out. I think it was because the gun was soaking wet, and I just couldn't press the mag release on the left side. And then when I did get a mag in, it was seated. I... I slapped that thing in and I started shooting again and it fell out, which I was encountering a couple weeks prior, but it, um, I had a good buddy, Matt Porth, laser weld some material onto the mag release and, and it seemed to go away, but I came back once in nationals, but that was the only the only issue that I had. So for the most part, the, ga- the gun ran. Uh, can't say the same for the FX9 or the, <laughs> or the PC <laughs> carbine. Wow, that was shocking. Of all those FX9, like the PC carbines can run if they stay clean. In, in yeah. my experience, but the mm-hmm. FX nines are a, a, a bit of a crapshoot. Like, I, well, I'm pretty that's... sure. Um, uh, oh, Dustin had like tried running an FX nine for a while, and uh, yeah, eventually just gave up on it. Yeah, they can. I, be heard, I heard the FX nines. You had to do a bunch to them to make them reliable. Yeah, I, I mean, this is the case for any blowback pistol caliber carbine. They are like an open gun. It's it's hard to get them running and keep them running. You got to kind of find your formula of tuning and, and ammo and magazines and then, and then go from there. But I, I will say, uh, do you guys know Wesley Stevens? from yep. 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 Yeah. Wes, he's been shooting PCC much longer than I have. He came second and his FX nine had no issues. He hmm. got that thing figured out and it was running like a, like a top. So he didn't have any issues, but, Man, I'd say the the number one gun that had issues at at nationals by far was the PC carbine, the Ruger, which was oh, really? surprising because you hear a lot of people say, uh, you know, I don't want to try a Canadian option, I don't want to try this because I, I want to try a a factory gun from a reputable manufacturer. And I, mm-hmm. I mean, I've only yeah. seen two or three in the wild until that match, and I was pre- yeah. I was pretty surprised to see them not run. And well, not I know run that the PC carbine has to be clean like Adriel was saying if it's dirty it it does not like to run or wet dirty yeah. and wet <laughs> yeah well it's interesting cuz yeah like like you said you might see one or two of them and maybe it runs fine but uh but to be in a match of 60 and RO uh 60 shooters yeah. you're going to get way better data from seeing yeah. all those people put all those rounds down range and there's no lying uh, on a stage there's no like Oh yeah, it runs fine. I put thousands of rounds through it. No, nope, on the stage, if you get a jam or something like that, it it hurts. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, any WK nines? WK nines. I I'm not familiar with the. Is that the Kodiak K nine? Yeah, that's yeah. W. Yeah. yeah. No, not a single one. I I was looking for one and I I didn't see any of them. Hmm. Maybe they were just so new. Uh, I mean, Kodiak doesn't have a great reputation to begin with, mind you. Neither does any Canadian manufacturer. So. Yeah, <laughs> not anymore. Yeah, yeah. Kdex, maybe Kdex. Okay, Kdex. Oh, yeah, yeah. Kdex. Yeah, <laughs> no one who makes semi-autos. No, so, no. I don't. Maybe ATRS, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah no, if they no get K-9. building them again, like they're I know they're doing a bunch of stuff. That, that'd be interesting. Did you see any ATRS modified P, uh, PC carbines there? Because I know like oh. they're making the chassis and everything for them. Four end, yeah. 
I, I've seen them on Instagram, but I know maybe they're just too new that they didn't they didn't show up there. <laughs> um, but it seemed like the guys who who dumped a lot of money or you could tell they'd, they'd put some work into building a PCC for competition. It was either the FX nine or a PC carbine with, I think it was an archangel chassis. I want to say I th- it had something to do with angel on it. Uh, I'm there's not really a, familiar with them. There's that tandem cross one that looks tandem real. Cross. That's yeah. probably the one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Not, that not angel. On I, was, it. I was close. Not even close. <laughs> tandem cross. Yeah. Those are cool. <laughs> Well, I'm going to be shooting with Dustin this weekend, so I will see whatever ATRS, all the goodies they put onto a Ruger PC carbine. I'm going to yeah. see that because mm-hmm. he'll be on my squad. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Nice. Well, they make good stuff, so I'm I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I mean, I picked the I picked the Raven simply because I'm left-handed, right? I I looked at doing PCC for the last couple of years, and I just couldn't find anything. I have a FX9, but as a left-handed person, the most important factor for me in running a stage in a country with 10 round mags is i got to be able to drop the mag with my firing hand right Mm -hmm. if i have to come back with my support hand and hit that mag release every time so one two three times a stage that's a half a second that i'm just giving up for no reason Mm -hmm. and so i just i I figured if i have to run something that's dedicated right hand i'm just not going to shoot pcc and then this came along and i thought okay i'll take a chance on lockhart and uh hopefully it shows up hopefully it runs and I didn't even plan to shoot PCC Nationals until that thing showed up and, and we got confirmation from, from Jim Smith that it was going to happen. So, uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. <laughs> yes. Yeah, one of our uh, listeners and frequent commenters, uh, Tony from Calgary, he shoots out of BTSA as well. And uh, he said he's shot a couple times with you with that. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, Tony. Yeah. 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 yeah, he shot our USPSA matches. I squatted with him. Great dude. I met him at, uh, I think it was a CRPS or ORPS match. Okay. And, uh, like, yeah, I got a PCC. I got a sub 2000. I said, yeah, come shoot. He's been great. He's actually pretty good. Awesome. It's probably pretty reliable as, as I hear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's another one that, that seems to be uh, not tuned properly because we, I, I made him do a, a weekend only stage at USPSA where you got to switch shoulders. So he's got to go to the left side. And immediately when he was done, you could see him. He was flinching and he was getting gas in the face. Which oh, is yeah. indicative of a not properly tuned PCC. Hmm. Yeah. Exactly what I was getting with the FX9. Yeah. The Raven so, ecosystem as a whole seems really interesting. Yeah, it is. Like saying. Yep. It, it's, you know, I've talked to a bunch of guys in the industry and um, they're really surprised that he got an AT or not an ATT, um, FRT, FRT number for it. Hmm. Yeah. Because it's it's an AR, it's just an AR. He's it's got a DI, a yeah, it's so good. Yeah, it's, it's just yeah. like his his <laughs> car, his PCC is just a direct blowback AR nine. His two two three is a just a DI AR fifteen with a longer bolt. That's pretty much it. <laughs> um, so I mean, I I believe in the platform. It has its teething issues. It's uh, like I I have a bunch of things that I've that I've talked to Samuel about regarding <laughs> the gun, but for the most part, it got to get a few thing things worked out, and then it's. It's solid. It's not going to suffer the same parts breakages issues on, as on the 180 platform because it uses a better system. It's it's no. not yeah. gonna it's not gonna have those different, breakages. Different parts breakages. Um, the the nine millimeter has a, an issue. Actually, you know what? I got a I got a firing pin in my grip right here because that's that's the only thing that has really been scaring me. I can show you guys. So it's not an AR-15 or. A, or a FX9 firing pin by any stretch of the imagination. You can see how thin it is right here. Oh, yeah. Oh, all the way yeah. down. Yeah, that's 1.4 inches of of thin firing pin at about 70 thou. So uh, I've had one snap here, thankfully yep. in practice. Justin had one snap on a big stage in Ipsic. Not oh. really screwed him. Um, but, yeah, he's, he's working that out. I don't know if I'm going to do something about this in the shop or just wait until he, he has a different design. Um, that's really, that's really the only glaring issue that the, the PCC has had. I've seen some of the rifles have bolt carrier cracks and I was actually on the phone with him last night and he said that uh, yeah, they didn't, they didn't follow, he outsourced that part to a different shop mm-hmm. and they didn't follow the drawing <clears throat> in terms of the radius on the skeletonized portion of the bolt carrier group. So he got them to remanufacture them and, and replace them. So. Um, we'll see. I mean, I I have no intention of getting another two two three for a while. 
Uh, maybe if Ipsa Canada does a rifle nationals, hint, hint, <laughs> then I might do that. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, with PCC and Ipsa, is there multiple divisions or is it just PCC? As of what day is it? June seventh. As of a month and a half ago, there are now two divisions because okay. Ipsic World came out with new rule books for every discipline, and PCC was. Uh, there was a number of changes made to the rule book. Uh, divisions was one of them. Unfortunately, they didn't make the divisions very interesting. It's just irons and optics. Everything yeah, the same except for that, which is unfortunate. I would have liked to see something like, yeah, like, it's like red dot or magnified. No, actually, I, I I don't know if that was a change, but now in the rule book, you cannot have any magnified optics. Period. That's oh mandatory Hmm. like you're either running an iron sight gun or you're running a one power or red dot on your gun that's it Hmm. Hmm. magnifiers are there's only three things i know of that are specifically prohibited in pcc division that's bipods Mm -hmm. uh, coupled magazines and magnified optics you can mount magazines on your rifle and you can have a foregrip that acts as a bipod or a monopod but you can't have a magnifier. You can't have magazines coupled to switch like, like we do in three gun or like you should be able to do in anything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they didn't, they didn't choose to do anything about magazine capacity or barrel length or, you know, compensator, no compensator, major power factor scoring would have been really interesting. They just went with irons and optics hmm. <laughs> just yeah. because I agree. Yeah. Boring. Yeah. You don't need to yeah. separate those. That's not different enough. Maybe if you wanted to separate it, uh well not in canada but like in the rest of the world like ma- uh, magazine capacity you could go yeah. like someone running like regular size mags and the guys running like the big stick or drum mags yeah get, like uh... do, do do what they do for production have a 15 round limit so you actually have to reload right yeah um, yeah because i think the capacity restriction for the rest of the world is is 32 rounds plus one in the chamber so 33 which i thought covered every stage but it, it turns out it doesn't <laughs> In in PCC, you can have forty round stages, which I think is a little excessive. One <laughs> mag change somewhere. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah do they surprising. do they still have like a per presentation limit, like an eight round presentation limit? Like, you know what I'm talking about? Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's that gets so convoluted when it comes to PCC and rifle because I think they have the same rules. It's eight rounds from any shooting position unless... that you have to take from that shooting position. If you can shoot it from others, it's all right, but it, you have to shoot it from there. Unless the targets are at 75 to a hundred meters, in which case you can have 20 scored hits from one shooting position. It's stupid. It's some <laughs> wild number. It's absolutely wild that you can force people to go prone and, and shoot a bunch of poppers at a hundred yards without reloading 20 times. It's no a, I believe that's the same as Ipsic Rifle. They kind of harmonize the the rule book with Ipsic Rifle. Okay. Yeah. So what was the longest shot that you had to do with PCC then? 80 meters on a on a full-size popper. And I got one mic on that and I just took it. I decided not to reload. Oh. They, they, had, they had three stages with distance targets. They had one that was... Your gun was on the ground, loaded, and you dropped down. You had a low port, and you had to hit 10 mini poppers in three lines. So you had a line of three, a line of four, a line of three. So you had to wait until one was down before oh. you hit the next one. And it was 10 rounds, so you got one makeup shot, and that's it. And unfortunately, I needed two. <laughs> <laughs> and then they had, they had one stage that was a 40-round stage where they had paper at 50 yards, which... I didn't practice at all. I just knew my holds and shooting offhand at paper at 50 yards is a little bit more difficult than I anticipated. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't done that for a while. Yeah, that it, it's fun with the actual rifle, never mind PCC, I imagine. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and that's the nice thing about PCC. That's really the only um, reason I would say to shoot PCC is to get good rifle practice in. Um, in a, in a match where you can shoot steel close, right? You're not going to be able yeah. to shoot a two, two, three at a popper, you know, 20 yards. So that's really the, that's the niche that PCC fills in my opinion. Cheap your ammo. ammo. Yeah. Your ammo's half price. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a bigger reason right there. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking Jake, a PCC, it, 
you get a set upright, it doesn't move. You just to get on a gun and just rip it. I, that's for me where PCC would be fun just to get on a gun and just rip it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and there was a, there was a, a somewhat of a learning curve when I got behind the PCC, having not shot, you know, a shouldered gun since the three gun days. And, uh, I learned pretty quickly that there was some, some differences with handgun way easier to shoot static. You can, once you're posted up in a position, you have targets in front of you, you can run that much faster than an open gun can. But if you have to start shooting on the move, and maneuver around walls and whatnot, that's where a handgun definitely takes over. Hmm. By a yeah. lot. Yeah. By a lot. Yeah. Um, I could see that. Which, you know, when I start shooting the, when I was shooting the pistol matches, the Ipsic pistol matches, and you have low targets where you, you're, you're taking your PCC and you're doing this. Pop, pop, pop. Like straight out of the <laughs> right? Not great uh, with a 19 inch barrel. No, <laughs> no, no. Well, and that's another reason why you see I don't have a, I don't have a compensator and muzzle brake on this. It's just a thread protector. Um, it's a 19 inch hmm. barrel. It's got enough weight there that it keeps the, it keeps the, the muzzle rise down. And it's, it's far more important for you to actually have a, a properly tuned system, like your, your buffer weight and your spring tension and all that, that kind of handles the recoil. Um, not, not to say that a muzzle brake wouldn't do anything on this or a compensator, but uh, I, it was long enough. I didn't want to make it any. <laughs> I, I would be curious to see what kind of recoil reduction you would see with a brake on a 19 inch nine millimeter. I bet not much. Like if you're running tight group or I don't, I don't know if you reload your, your nine millimeter or not, but if you're running tight group, that shit's burned in like the first three inches of barrel, maybe. Mm -hmm. And then you got <laughs> another yeah. 16 inches of, yeah, pressure is increasing a little bit, but yeah, there's well, probably I had not a, a lot to work against those baffles when exactly. we get down there. Right. <laughs> And that was kind of the theory I worked out in my head when I bought the gun. I'm like, I don't need a muzzle brake or, or a compensator. Like, I've got a long barrel. It shouldn't need anything, right? And and you're right. I did I did reload my ammo up until this year when I was approached by FH Munitions. And they wanted to sponsor me and provide ammo and kind of get their name out there. So I accepted that. And I've been working with them. And their ammo has been fantastic. It's 124 grain of factory ammo. So mm -hmm. it ran really well in the PCC because it's round nose which is very important for running a PCCs. You need, <laughs> you need ammo that's actually going to feed into the gun. Right. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, I was, I was surprised. I thought, you know, you know, factory ammo, it's going to, it's going to lose so much oomph by the end of that barrel that you're not going to gain a lot of velocity. And boy, was I wrong that that factory ammo is running just under major power factor out of mm -hmm. this gun. It's 157.8 power factor or just under 1300 feet per second. So I bet you if I did put a muzzle brake on there, it would do something. Uh, but at the end of the day, I didn't feel like I needed it. Right? Not enough to care. Yeah. 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 And, and you saw a lot, of, a lot of compensators on guns at Nationals. Uh, there was a few of us that just run, ran threads. Like Justin, Justin got third and he ran the, pretty much the same gun that I did. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's more important to have your buffer weight tuned properly to your ammo than it is to have a, have a comp on it. And to have enough rounds to your gun to to know it's reliable and to trust mm -hmm. it, and know what know what issues it it gets and and how to fix them, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. your your mag retention issue, you know, knowing knowing what to do next if that happens, not just staring at it and being like, uh, <laughs> yeah. what, do I, what do I do now? <laughs> well, That's that was weird. A, that, was, that was a clear cut case of don't clean your gun before a match. Um, oh, and, and honestly, I've put now four after nationals. I'm at 4,300 rounds through this gun since January, and I have not done a thorough cleaning once on it. Not once. When I went out to get my dope on it, just to see where I was hitting at 100 yards, 125, 150, I, I did a quick spray of G96 down the barrel, and I mm -hmm. and I pulled my boar snake through it twice, and I did a little bit of just like descaling my trigger, <laughs> and that was it. I added some oil. Um, but what really caused the, okay, I should be careful here. I don't want to say cause because I'm not hundred percent sure. When I first got the gun, the first hundred rounds, I was having mags drop free when I was just shooting without hitting the mag release. And then that went away. And then I had a mag drop free on me or no, not a mag drop free, but I was at a, uh, one of our Thursday nights and I lost my mag release on the left side. It just fell off. It took me a huh. half, half an hour to find it. And when I did find it, i Bolted it back on. I said, tonight, I'm going to thread lock that in just to make sure. And when I did that, I said, oh, you know what? I got a lot of carbon buildup on the shelf of my magazine release. I should probably clean that off. 
And that was a mistake. Once I cleaned that off, I went to the <laughs> Ipstick match that weekend, and I was having Maggie's drop out over and over and over. And talked to Samuel, and he said, it's probably the way that the left-handed mag release is interacting with the paddle. And he's probably right on that. I haven't pulled it apart, but not having that little shelf of carbon was the determining factor. <laughs> Uh, so that was like, oh, don't clean your gun. Don't clean your gun before nationals. Just let it run. <laughs> it's running. Just keep it running. I I it's cleaned fair, all yeah. my guns and I have a big match next weekend. <laughs> oh, get out there and get some rounds through that thing. Get it dirty again. Too late. Too late. Don't care. But n- none of my guns are new. They're all they're all guns I've shot like a, a lot. They're not, they're not new this year. Um, that's, that's Battle of Alberta, right? Next year. Yeah. Ne- next yeah. week. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. wanted to make that. Couldn't make. It. I couldn't swing it. Too many big matches, weekend yeah. after weekend. The domestic technician have... gets mad and pocketbook. <laughs> and... Yeah, yeah. I don't have a weekend off from now until October fifteenth. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's nonstop. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm there as well. But uh, yeah, I mean, the it, it, it sounds really interesting, and and it's good, great to hear that that platform is actually doing pretty well because like that's just one small issue right um in terms of where that mag the mag release is is it ambi it's ambi yeah here i'll uh, so it's your classic kind of paddle paddle mag release for a right hand person yeah but then right about right about here you've got a socket screw that's going through the uh, receiver to the other side where you have this uh this is a left-handed mag release Uh so essentially what the that socket screw, the head of the socket screw is pushing back against the paddle, and that's acting as the magazine release. I'll try and pull this thing apart, not get covered in carbon. <laughs> you already cut it in half. <laughs> yeah, just just handling the pins. I was going to say, if it's like the high point. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Everything gets is... compared to the high point. <laughs> <laughs> My magwell is... is electrical tapes on because it's a 3d printed prototype oh but, nice so gamer um, gamer through and through <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah literally. It, it's it's a gamer move so it's it's right about it's right about here that it's just pushing so it's not the most efficient lever oh yeah so it it, it tends to bind up a little bit but you know, after a couple hundred rounds it was dropping mags free no problem i, I wasn't even thinking about it so yeah it's fully ambi like it's got ambi bolt release, ambi mag release, ambi safety. Cool. You can oh, flip wow. the the charging handle to the other side, or use an AR style charging handle. He went really hard on the whole ambi thing. He wanted it to be options, options, options on everything, everything. Nice. Yeah. Like even the bolt on that, you can punch a pin through the bolt and take off the front and put on a forty cal or a forty five. I don't even know if they're offered yet or who would want to shoot a forty five. BZC. I'm sure there's someone out there who wants to. Oh, there's somebody, yeah. Yep. It's for hunting when dingoes. <laughs> <laughs> need the 45. Need that extra power. But now yeah, 10 mil. Now you've got my attention. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, yeah, that's really I, interesting. I'm I'm pleasantly surprised at the platform. It's very well machined. It's it's exactly what I was hoping for. I wasn't expecting it, but I was hoping for it. And, you know. But, Pretty cool. happy. Cool. So on your Instagram, when you first got that, you were doing a lot of playing and making different parts and spacers. To did yeah. any did any of that stick, or did it just, was it just? Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, actually, uh, oh, I'll get my hands a little blacker. Yeah, like why don't you walk us through what, everything you did to make that function the way you wanted it to function? Yeah. So I I talked a bunch with uh, oh so so. Oh no! <laughs> um, so, uh, I I talked a bunch with. Uh, oh, and now the space is down. Give me one second. I, I talked a bunch with. Uh, if you're familiar with Max Leo Grandis mm-hmm. and um, Zach Smith down in the U.S., uh, two pretty good PCC shooters. Uh, just talking about, hey, how do you get a PCC to run? What do you do to it? Like, what what are you, you know, what are you focusing on when it comes to a PCC, and uh, tuning tuning the the reciprocating mass was a big one so i kind of focused on that and funny enough uh before i'd even talked about that i had i had already ordered the this adjustable buffer 
Hell uh, yeah. So oh. he, you know, he, he already knew about that, I guess, uh, Samuel, when, when he made the gun. So he offered this adjustable buffer that is now at like, I think, 10 and a half ounces. It's got tungsten weights in there. And oh, okay. I would go even heavier if I could. But uh, then I, I made this spacer, which I originally made for my FX9. But it, this was as long as I could go on the Raven before I started running into issues. Uh, most of the issues were either um, it wasn't resetting the trigger or I was getting dead, well, yeah, dead triggers or the magazine spring wasn't strong enough to push <laughs> a new round up in time to load. And so it was, <laughs> oh, it was yeah. jamming up on me. Running. So I, I kind of backed it off until I got to the point where it was reducing my recoil and still functioning reliable. So actually, this is the first time I pulled the spacer out in probably 2,500 rounds. And it's just a piece of aluminum that I spun up on a lathe. So uh, I did that. And then I put in this, like back from the three gun days, I had a hyperfire eclipse kicking around. That's, you know, after, after talking with Max and if, if you, if you look at his YouTube, he does a bit of a comparison between a number of triggers uh, with PCCs and rifles and, and what you want in terms of running a trigger quickly. And he came to the conclusion that the ECL was the best. I'm like, Oh man, I should buy one of those. And I was like, wait a second. It's in a drawer. <laughs> I've got it in a drawer somewhere in the basement. So I slapped it in there and I was I was having dead trigger issues near the start and then it just went away. I, I didn't do anything. I don't know how I fixed that. It just went away. Fixed it. Got it dirty. Yeah. <laughs> that could that could be a tricky thing getting getting the right trigger for a PCC because I know if you get something that's too light, you end up bump firing it with like a heavy, yeah. heavy bolt or something like that. I think yeah. uh yeah, Wes showed me that uh, you can fire yeah, you pretty can quickly. Get... Yeah, and and if you go too heavy on your on your buffer weights, you can get bolt bounce, or you can just batter the life out of your breech face. Yeah, and uh, um, but really, the what it came down to with the ECL is you want to kind of minimize the distance or the difference between your pull weight and your reset weight. So I ordered the trigger tech trigger with this gun, and I thought, you know, I've had a trigger tech before, and I loved it. And then I started running it and I couldn't run it very quickly and I was having trigger freeze and I didn't know what was going on. And when I was um, doing more investigation like with Max's videos, he was saying, look, you, if you have a big difference between your pull and your reset, you're going to run into trigger freeze. And I found that the, the trigger tech is a very, very nice break, very minimal overall travel. It gets just a hair back and forth, but it breaks at exactly three pounds and it resets at like, three or four ounces. So you have a big gap in there that, yeah. that you have to manually put in work to reset. Whereas the eclipse it's breaking at one and a half pounds and it's resetting at 12 ounces. So I was gonna ask you if there was a trigger weight limit for uh, Ipsic PCC. No. no, nothing. Yeah. Like, like I was saying, magnified optics, coupled mags and bipods, everything else. You don't even have to have a belt. You can run your magazines on pouches, chest rigs, you know, you can have them mounted on the gun. You can do whatever you want. No really? barrel length restrictions. You can run a handgun in a chassis if you want. It's like open division on steroids. And then they that's... put those three weird rules. Well, that's really interesting because I remember from Shotgun, and that was a big kind of eye-opener for us that we couldn't run chest rigs for Ipsic Shotgun. Everything had to be from the belt. From the belt at waist level, I think. Yeah. And then we got there, and there was people running their – you know they're a little bit higher than the belly I'm like, oh what can i do i don't know what's legal i don't want to get kicked out yeah. well they were they were being lenient that match too yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm. and there was there was leniency showed at, at this match as well it was a level yeah. three but it was uh you know as an ro there was stuff that was let go that <laughs> that was you know we'd be thrown out at an ipsic alberta level two right mm. They just wanted to get people through. They wanted, uh, I'm, I'm not saying there was any like nobody juiced around over the berm or anything like that. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. man, he he yeah. lowered his muzzle before the load and make ready, and there was no one down range, and his chamber flag was in. We were just, hey, don't do that again, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, it's right, stuff like that. Hmm. Cool. So, no, it was, it was a good time. It was, uh, hmm. it was a lot of fun, and it sounds like they're going to do another one next year, probably out west here. If, oh, okay, uh, it's not guaranteed yet, but uh, one of the other guys who who finished in the top four, uh, Nick, he's from BC, very good shooter. He's he's probably in his early sixties, and he shot really well. 
and he's thinking about doing nationals next year in Kamloops, which I would absolutely attend. Oh, that'd be beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As long as it's not on fire whenever you guys go. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this rate, I think we're about to set a record for the worst wildfire season in history. So hmm. worst so far. Or so yeah. far. <laughs> Still 2024. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But, hmm. Yeah, that'd be cool. Okay. What what kind of uh so you're you, you guys are doing a lot of PBCC uh, down at BTSA. Uh, PTSA is a division in some of the different three gun divisions uh, out here in Alberta. Who else? Do you, do you know who else is, is running a lot of PCC? I, I you know I don't know, and there's not a lot of communication between the different IPSC sections across mm-hmm. Canada. I found out at nationals that uh, Kyle, do you remember soon? He was one of the guys. He, I think he finished second. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he said, "Hey, we're doing a IPSC Ontario Provincial Shotgun Championship this year." <laughs> this is the first I've heard of this. Yeah. <laughs> so I, it's hard to say. I know that uh, I know that Nova Scotia and New Brunswick they do some PCC only matches. Um, I, I'm sure that they're they're pretty low level. Like they're not they're not selling out 120 shooters, right? Um, and there's been it's been a bit of a battle here in Alberta trying to get it offered and and recognized and get the ROs trained up on the even just two range commands that are different. So it's there's still a lot of work to do. This match was kind of intended to be the spark to get PCC mm-hmm. going in the, in the country. Right. And um, I had a long conversation with Jim Smith. Uh, he's the head of N- NROI here in Canada, the top range officer, and they are putting together a PCC only black badge so that people who don't have a handgun right now can take a black badge with their PCC. And oh, smart, it. smart. Yeah. Mm. And well, they're they were... also putting together a shotgun and a rifle one, which, uh, you know, I thought, you know, just make a PCC one and then allow them to shoot shotgun and rifle. But yeah, they, with, they with no it, new so. pistol owners, you got to get people into the sport. Yeah. Right. So in so all honesty, my... they were talking about that back in 2019. Yeah. When but we were it at sounds nationals, like they were talking like a restricted, non-restricted pistol, long gun, black mm-hmm. badge. It sounds like it's already been written up. It just needs approval from Ipsic World, and then it's going to be implemented. So hopefully okay. by the end of this year, that's Good. what I've heard. Um, and there's a couple black badge officer trainers here in Alberta who are interested in doing that. Good. So, you know, and I've I've gotten a few DMs from from shooters in Alberta saying, "Hey, I don't have a handgun, but I want to shoot Ipsic. I have a PCC. How do I do it?" I said, right now, there's nothing, uh, but it, yeah. we're, it's in the works. So soon um yeah and you know i think we're getting over the hump of uh of bias against bcc uh, now it's now it's shifting to limited optics and in uspsa and any new division is going to get hated on right so yeah, it's, it's okay. nice oh, i, I got to get a slide for my 2011 for that limited <laughs> optics <laughs> yeah <laughs> so yeah that's uh that's kind of the future of ipsic right now I'm pushing yeah. Jim Smith to do a rifle nationals next year, but he's going to go to worlds. He's, he said, I'm going to go to worlds. I'm building a pump action 350 legend to shoot in standard manual or yeah. St- say, what were you shoot? Like there's not really much for uh... <laughs> nothing. It's yeah. it was just like us. Like you have to go train on your own and then go to a big match. That's it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, even for guns that are still legal to, to shoot, like there's nothing mm-hmm. a real quality yeah i i mean if we did a rifle nationals here i think you'd or even just try to get some ipsic rifle matches going there's a i believe there's a lot of gun owners out there significantly more than those who have pccs who have wk-180s like the gen 2s tavors bushmasters you know any any non-restricted 223 on the market right now there's going to be a ton of those people who might be interested in shooting a match and that that's a really untapped market mind you it is mm-hmm. it is a lot harder to run an ipsic rifle match with the resetting and the distance targets and mm-hmm. and yeah. whatnot but if we could tap that market i think people would really like those matches i think it's a lot of good training value uh for those people and it would really help ipsic so kind of everyone would be happy well with ipsic rifle can you not use flashers or do they have to be falling targets oh, like your distance? Be falling targets yeah. Oh, really? So you, 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 pretty much, if you're if you're running a long range stage, you gotta have a you gotta have a side by side or a quad there, and range is oh. clear. Book it out there, pace the targets, uh, call them. Come back. Yeah. Leave, it only, to, leave it to Ipsic to screw up the rifle part. <laughs> I, and, and you know what? 
I, I, there is, there is one little way around that, that I can see is just having steel targets at distance. Cause there, there's a guy, I think he's in Utah who he makes a hydraulic yeah. uh, resetter for poppers. Uh, and then you could just do that. Superstition mountain. They, they haven't been using those for, for a while, but when I first went, went down to superstition, they had LaRue's and yeah, they fell. And then after like 30 seconds, they stood back up. Mm-hmm. Nice. Mm-hmm. Whoa, and those would be legal. And, <laughs> and cool. to be honest, like it, the whole painting the steel after every shooter, we didn't even do that at nationals at PCC nationals. We would go by squad. We would ask the squad no. when they got there, do you want us to paint the targets for you? No. Okay. We won't. Yes. Okay. We will. So, I mean, you yeah. could just run through a squad and then between squads, you just mm-hmm. book it out there, paint the, paint the popper and have at her. Those auto resetting after 30 seconds would wreck a terrible, a bad shooter. Who's like shooting the stage? Yeah, like, oh, no, you gotta do it <laughs> oh, I got another one. <laughs> boom, 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 like yeah. wasting the bag, going after. It. Yeah, <laughs> come back. Yeah, ten, just a, ten minutes a later, them out there. <laughs> come back, so. Uh, oh well, yeah. But I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to do long range for a sick rifle. You can use micro <laughs> targets, the ones that are this big. Uh, there's a, yeah. a stage that they use micro targets at, at PCC nationals. Um, you could just push those out to 50 yards and, and that yeah. simulates distance. It's not the yeah. same. You don't have to use holds or, you know, BDC or anything like that, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. at least it makes it more challenging. Yeah. But I'm probably going to run a rifle PCC match at the end of this year at, at BTSA. We'll see. We'll see if I can get the range time. Oh. Yeah, nice. That's cool. Well, well, Adriel, any other questions? No, I've been jumping in where I want to. Yeah. Yep. Mo? <laughs> no, I, you ended up asking everything I wanted to ask, so it's cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, I'll, I'll ask one final question. And uh, what's it feel like to be a two time national champ? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's weird. It's it's like being a, a pioneer on this. It, you know, there's there hasn't been one of these before. It's it's strange. You know, I, I hope it I hope it gets bigger. I hope I can kind of spark interest for it um i mean i i'm very happy that i put in the work and i was able to get the championship um uh, you know i i hope it's bigger next year and i hope there's you know we had a lot of good competitors there and unfortunately a few of them their guns didn't run and it kind of took them out of contention but yeah. i'm sure it'll be a lot closer next year so i'm looking forward to that um but yeah it feels good yeah. <laughs> now i got a month and a half to figure out how to shoot a handgun again try and <laughs> I'm sure you'll do just fine on that. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Kevin's got a question here. What would be a good way to start to get into it? Into IPSC like PCC, PCC or just PCC yeah. in general? Um, depending on what province you are, I'd say if you if you know of an IPSC club around you, ask ask them if they are running matches that offer PCC. And uh, I mean, unfortunately, right now, if you don't have a handgun, if you have a handgun, sign up for your black badge, even if you don't intend to shoot yep. your handgun, um, and then sure. and then shoot uh, PCC in that. And there's clubs all over the country that are still running like two gun, three gun that you can that you can get into. Uh, I'm not aware of any PCC only matches. Unfortunately, it's still kind of in its infancy. So, um, yeah, I'm like I was saying before, the division is, is very relaxed. It's not like you have to have certain things. You can run all of your magazines on your mm-hmm. on a chest rigger in your pockets if you want. So if you have a PCC and you've got sights on it, you can compete. So and, and you can have a great time and learn a lot and, and get better. Um, so but if you if you are in a region where there is active IPSC, uh, then try and get your black badge uh, with a handgun. Mm-hmm. But if not, you'll probably have to wait until at least the end of the year, if not next year to, to get a black badge for that. That's that's the best I got for you. <laughs> cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, congratulations again, Taylor, and uh, thanks for coming on and yeah, thank telling you. us about the match and everything. Ipsic mm-hmm. PCC. Yeah, I'm happy to. Hope you're enjoying New Mexico. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. New Mexico is good. 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 Awesome. It's good to thanks, have Taylor. Taylor. <laughs> yeah, no problem, guys. Thanks, Taylor. It's a pleasure. Thanks again, Taylor, for joining us tonight and joining us for the rest of the show. <laughs> yeah, happy to be here. I like talking to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah, we'll move into uh, listener feedback. And 
As far as Facebook goes, uh, well, we got Tony on here. He's saying Taylor is be betraying the PCC division. Who will lead us now? What? <laughs> I just led you in the nationals. <laughs> Who will lead you now? Justin Thompson. There, there you he go. showed you the way. Now you just got to follow. He showed you how to fish. <laughs> Here in Alberta, it'll be Justin. In Saskatchewan, it'll be Wesley Stevens. We got some really good PCC. Ontario, you got like David Archer. And uh, man, yeah, you, you got some good PCC shooters in this country. It's, it just needs yeah. some more exposure. And yeah. we're great at reloading. Yeah. Yeah. That's way that's better than the Americans. That's the key. <laughs> I couldn't shoot PCC in the US because every every array I've just like, oh, don't need to do that. <laughs> and on the gun, why is it so heavy? Yeah. Oh, there's more than 10 rounds. <laughs> wow. It's wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ross was uh, commenting saying Ian did a video that criminals would get off because. The other gang member was known to want to kill him, so self-defense applies. Ordinary Canadians, you're screwed. Liberals got to go. Oh, that's like that uh, that nightclub shooting. Where was it? Halifax? That a guy left a he left a nightclub and he was carrying illegally, and there was a guy out to get him, and he pulled the gun on him, and the guy shot him in self-defense, and they said he he shot him in self-defense. Completely ignored the fact that he wasn't licensed to have a gun. Yeah. Obviously, he wasn't licensed to carry a gun. <laughs> but because it was self-defense, he was fine. They oh, dropped wow. out charges. That's Canada. Was, Hug he, a thug. was he previously known to the police? I believe so. I, I can see if I can pull it up. Very good. <laughs> very good answer of that, yes. Always yeah. is. Always is. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. That's Canada for you. That's pretty much it for Facebook. Uh, we didn't actually get any emails this week. Yeah, what up? What what's up with it's that? Summer. Well, we well we got a couple quick little ones, but uh, we did get some YouTube comments. And uh, first one was uh, speaking of PCCs, Team Alberta took home first, third, and ninth overall, as well as top team at the first Ipsic Canada PCC Nationals. Would be cool to learn more about their experience, what they shoot, and Ipsic PCC in general. Just a content idea. Well, D, you're Ask in luck. We just had <laughs> Taylor luck. on and did that. So. Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> uh, we got Broke Boy 912 uh, is commenting on the high point, saying, You're wrong on so many things. The Red Ball Sports 20 round mags. Are one single steel magazine, not two stuck together. Don't care. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he made another comment saying, I run the 10 round carbine mags in his C9. The eight round C9 mags are too short to fit in the carbine. So, okay. okay. Uh, a comment. Discord invite link from last night's show is expired. Well, I have refreshed the non-expiring link for tonight's show. So I will have that posted up right there right now. And Darren says, the only explanation for what's going on is that the Liberals and NDP think that the firearms owners are a threat to Canadian national security. Or their own power. Yeah. Yeah, it's just we're we're an easy uh, whipping boy. Yeah. There's not a lot and, of us to vote for them. Yeah, D commented, "Great episode, but depressing." And yes, I agree. It was it quite was. depressing. It was. With in there, yep. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's it for our YouTube comments. I haven't seen anything on Instagram or our Facebook Messenger, Discord. Well, we. We do have a Discord. I just posted the link into the chat here or email us. I know we did have one email and we sent him a link, but uh, yeah, just in the Facebook chat here, we have a link to join our Discord. Uh, also, if you uh, go to our website on the sidebar, there's a link to Cabela's. So if you're ordering something from Cabela's, just go to our website, click that link. Gives us a little bit of a kickback without costing you anything. Um, I think uh, over the next little bit, we'll do our May 
purchases or were there any May pur purchases? I was supposed to have them up. I don't have them up. Okay. Well, maybe we'll do it next week then. Yeah. Uh, we're also on pl Patreon and Player. Uh, player is what? Utron. Well, it used to be Utron. Now it's Player. Uh, so you can go there, support us. And yeah, you know, send an email to the show on Slamfire Radio at gmail.com as well. And shout outs. Anybody have any uh, shout outs? Yeah, I got some. Cool. Oh, sorry. Um, to the Thursday night fun shoot guys for organizing that. Demir for organizing National Range Day. And just uh, preemptively, the BOA organizers. We have like a matchbook this year. It looks fantastic. Like the, the everything, the the stage designs, organization, everything's been like top notch this year. Way better than when I was doing some of that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, Mo, do you have any shows? Does it have to be gun related? No. No. Uh, Tool, the greatest band ever, is coming to Montreal in November. <laughs> so I just want to say that. Coming nice. to Edmonton too. Uh, okay. Cool. Uh, Taylor, you have any shout outs? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, shout out to Sean Hansen, president of Ipsa Canada, and Jim Smith, head of Enroy, for putting on a great PCC Nationals. Uh, they put in a lot of work. They got the permit for the match the day before, so they, I know how stressed they were. Uh, shout out to Team Alberta for taking, uh, you know, top team at the first PCC Nationals and Wes Stevens taking second overall from Saskatchewan. Um, yeah. Shout out to FH Ammo for making great ammo. <laughs> yeah. Nice. <laughs> just speaking about ammo, I just want to mention this one just because this because it just came in in my email here. Uh, TNA is selling 5,000 uh, primers of small rifle. It's Campro primers. For, they're 76 bucks per thousand if you buy them by the wow. 5,000. That's good. That's, That's a good price. Good, yeah. Very good. Yeah. And you can use them in pistols if you bump up your hammer spring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have done that. Yep. Uh, I don't have a shout out, but Dave did want us to uh, mention and it goes together with Rock Cut here. But uh, Dave wanted to give a shout out to Dakota from East Gray for helping out on the pistol range for National Range Day and Rock Cut Shooting Club. Uh, I'll kind of join in and say shout out to all the National Range Day volunteers and the ranges who hosted events that day. For sure. And with that, we're going to sign off. So once again, go join our Discord server, watch us on Facebook, YouTube, Player, join the CCFR, and we will see everyone next week. Later, everyone. Good night, Kelly. Hey. See you guys.